to me like a scene from Barry preceded by some yeah, soldiers that's, that's, walking. It's Charlie O'Connor's shoe store. And um, I don't know who these fellows are coming out. Yep. This is our ram tanks. They're going west on Dunlop Street. This is the early part of the war. And uh, they're right in front of the Queen's Hotel at the present time, uh, going by in front of the Queen's. They're going west on Dunlop Street? West on Dunlop Street. On Dunlop Street. Yeah, it's towards the old post office. Uh-huh. You can see the old barber shop on the south side of the yes, street there. Yes, yes. Florist shop right in behind the tank there now. It seems to be a little clearer right now. I don't think the light was too bad. There, no. there, sir. This is the Air Force Band and um, the veterans. Uh, they're, uh, that's going east. That's between Toronto Street and Mary Street. And this looks like it's an early part of the war also. And in the background are the uh, Gray and Sepco Foresters coming up. What's that cleaner in the background there? Is that right? That's new service cleaners. Oh, oh yeah. that was, um, I believe that was owned by uh, Mr. Sinkler back in those days. And George Montgomery had a, uh, an auto supply place right uh, And this is on? This is on what used to be Elizabeth Street, which is now Dunlop Street, <laughs> between Toronto Street and uh, Mary Street. Aye. That's Mary Street going up there. Right. This is coming up Clapperton Street, and uh, they're turning and um, going west on uh, Collier Street. You can see the Anglican Church out in the background there. Right. They're now going towards Bayfield Street, am I correct? That's correct. They're yes. going towards Bayfield Street now. It appears to be a nice sunny spring day. It seems to be. And way in the background is the old Victoria Public School over at Own Street there. Yes. My wife attended Victoria School. Well, so did I. Well, <laughs> it puts you all in the same bracket then. I uh, just noticed those old cars there. They seem to be all out of the 30s and maybe early 40s. Well, I, uh, you know, very early 40s because, uh, you know, they stopped producing cars in uh, 41. There's a, the old fire department, the uh, fire truck, the real fire truck they got in 1934, and that's the way you used to pick up the firefighters as they proceeded down the road if they were available. And this is taking ice out of the lake. And um, you can see the huge hunks. They were around, I think, about 200 pounds that they pulled out. And they're being picked up uh, by an endless conveyor belt there, driven by a horse, which we'll see a little later on. They used to cut these uh, strips in big, long lengths. They cut them one way, almost through. Then they cut them in big strips. And then as they put the big strip in, you can see the fellows separating them with a spud there and breaking them apart. That's the saw that they used to uh, cut the ice with. Must have been extremely cold and also maybe dangerous work out there. Well, it was very mean? dangerous when they were taking the ice out because, of course, the big fat uh, flatbed uh, um, uh, sleighs that they had they used to get uh, the, the they they come out and they were they covered with ice. This is the horse turning the um, uh, conveyor to pull the ice out of the lake. You can see there's a pile of sand behind them there that they used to put on the ice to give the horse a little traction. Windy and cold. These, so no. these blocks are about 200 pounds. That's what I believe. And I don't and think uh, these fellows have safety boots on. I haven't got safety boots on. They can, very few of them. I don't see any parkas around, not the way they used to be. That's a background of Barry looking towards Fisherman's Point. Here we have the horses again, and as a... Yeah, now they're taking them over to the... Um, they used to have uh, ice houses in Barrie, but then they also used to uh, load the freight cars and take them down to Toronto. And you can see they've got an automatic device there that just, yes. they slide it out into it and it picks it up and throws it into the um, boxcar. This train has about 40 or 50 cars. It's just incredible how much ice they shipped from here. It was called Lake Simcoe Blue Ice from my reading, and, and some of these uh, trains went as far as uh, Chicago. That's right, and then they also used to have, at the, uh, on the south side of the lake, the railroad had a huge ice house, Extraordinary. and they had a permanent um, spot that they um, stole the ice with. <clears throat> this is up in the Market Square. This appears to be an airplane wreck that maybe they pulled off the lake. The Barry Public Library is in the background there. 
Now, this is inside Wright Cleaners at, at 86 Dunlop Street, and the old Ross block is across the road in the background. This lady is cleaning the office by the looks of it. That's right. Now, this is out back of the Queen's Hotel, and you can, uh, looking up the hill, you can see the huge billboards that used to have all along the um, south side of Collier Street. And then uh, there's a lane over at the um, to the left. In the background, there's Dr. Lewis. He had a, a practice up there. This is down in the post office square, the old um, CNR station. You can see where they've trail, cleaned a trail through the um, snow and the ice to take the mail into the post office. That is the old post office. Oh, that yeah. was it. Yeah, and then this is the snow removal on Dunlop. And I can remember when they got the big grater, that was quite the thing. And then Keith Marshall designed this uh, snow loader. Uh, it worked about 60% uh, of the time, and the other 40% <laughs> of the time was broken down. <laughs> and that's Jack Rainey's haulage truck. On the opposite side of the road, uh, well, there's the, uh, the laneway that we used to sleigh right down and uh, also come down on. Um, Cardboard cartons that we would uh, make an ice slide and slide this, down. This there. came down to uh, from Collier Street towards Dunlop Street, right? That's right. Behind that's directly behind my father's drugstore at 84 oh. Dunlop Street. I seem to have a real fun time here. Well, we used to do, have a great time there. Now this is the early, I believe this is the first Tamlin fire, and um, it started early on a Sunday morning, and it was. Um, Quite a spectacular sight for all the people in Barrie. The, the downtown Barrie filled up very quickly to watch this, but it was terribly cold. As I recall, it was below 30 below zero. There's the post office in the background. That's looking uh, east from uh, Bayfield, Clapperton Street down Dunlop Street. Yeah, we have the date on there, December the 20th, 1942. I can remember getting out of church and coming down and watching the fire quite a while. My father was on the fire department. There's Cliff Carley. He was a longtime member, probably the longest member of the fire department in Barrie. All day long this fire, um, it went um, well late in the afternoon. And they did get it under control, did they? Well, finally, but it used to break out. You can see in some of these pictures a little later where the fire breaks out. And of course, back in those days, they didn't have an aerial truck to get up on top and shoot the water down. So in a few minutes, uh, you'll to the uh, right of the frame, you'll see the firemen have gotten up on the building next door, and they've lowered a rope, and uh, they're pulling the fire hose up to get at the uh, fire. From there, you can see the fire billowing out again. A lot of the white uh, clouds, are, I think, are steam. From, uh, because it was so cold and they were pouring so much water on it. In just a few minutes you'll see them pulling the hose up the side of the building. That certainly is some smoke and steam coming out there. Oh, it was a tremendous sight. There they are pulling the hose up the uh, yeah. side of the building to get the water going directly down into the fire. Was that building affected by the fire as well? No, because back in, the, you know, they had a big fire back in Barry in the 1800s and uh, the new buildings went up. Now this is the back of the um, Harley uh, fire that was on Dunlop. This was at 82 Dunlop Street. That's directly, those steps are directly behind my father's drugstore and the two buildings extended out to each side. This is uh, taken off Dunlop Street now. You can see the uh, smoke and the ladders and um, back in those days they didn't have the police control I guess you can see the people would just walk right down and walk just around the fire even where the <laughs> fire truck and the ladders were. <coughs> Your father's drugstore was called Monkman's Drugstore. That's right. I see. Do you recognize and that fellow? No I don't recognize, I, there's a, some of these fellows I do recognize but uh, there's the, um, I was taken directly in, in front of my father's drugstore and that's going back towards the Queen's Hotel. You see the firemen that back in those days, they didn't have much protection. Oh, I noticed in the wooden ladders, they're extremely uh, fragile by the looks of it and high, too. Look at that fellow climbing up with his rubber boots. And, and, and no, no um, 
breathing apparatus no, or anything else. No just no walk right into, the, right into the smoke, and that's, I guess that's where they're called smoke. There's Cliff Carly again. That you call them smoke eaters. That's what you meant. There they're right. looking out. I think they're trying to get a breath they're of air. trying to get a breath of air. I think that was O'Connor that was just there. And uh, back in these, those days, after the fire, they used to have to uh, coil the hoses all up, and uh, then they would uh, take them back up to the fire hall. In the early days, they hung them up in the bell tower. They'd pull the hoses up and hook them on and let them dry out that way, but later on they got long racks that went along the wall, which was much safer and much easier to use. And that's the Queen's Hotel. That's the Ross block in behind the fire truck and Harris Flower Shop off to the left. Yeah, this scene uh, looks familiar now, but <coughs> it's the Queen's Hotel. It wasn't affected by the fire. No, none of those. I was going to say earlier that after the fire, they, the new brick buildings that they put up, they always had a what they used to call a firewall in fire. between them, and a big heavy brick wall in between, which did contain the fire usually into that one building. I don't know whether this is the cavalry or not, but... <laughs> There's the post office. That's out at, um, about past Payne's Week, out at St. Paul's. That was the Highway 11, which was very picturesque back in those days. They, those pine trees they used to have on postcards. This is, this is clearing the ice off the um, sidewalks. The ice and snow used to build up so deep, you can see there was a six-inch drop there. And uh, you used to have to be careful, especially the older people when they're walking along, because some of the merchants would clean it off and the others wouldn't clean off the ice, so you had these huge drops. This looks like uh, more or less spring was arriving, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Is that Charlie O'Connor in here? <coughs> no, that's the fellow from Wright that's cleaning his windows, but this gives you an idea of some of the snow we used to have back in those days, but even then, that's. That's only half as deep as some of the snow banks we used to see around here. <coughs> that truck seems to have taken the wrong turn there. Eh? Yeah, he got caught in uh, an old Hyatt transport. And the cameraman was right on the spot taking the picture. Well, George used to get out and catch a lot of these things that took place. This is back on Dunlop Street. That's the um, wall paint wallpaper shop that they just had the big fire. That's the Rexall Drug Store. That was my father's store there to the right. There's Charlie O'Connor. Charlie was a well-known shoe salesman here. Rapid talk. <laughs> Quite a character. This is Dixie Corbett. In, uh, they used to have Dixie Smoke Shop. Oh, yes. Dixie was quite a well-known character in town also. He had a billiard hall out in his backyard. Out in the back, part me out in the back part of the shop. This is looking east from the uh, Queen's. There's Hotel. my father. He's uh, sweeping the, the store, up the sidewalk off in front of the store. There's a post office in the background, with the tower. What was the metal tower for? That was used to, for, as a flagpole. I see. They you uh -huh. used to have the flags up on the other side it's of it. Jackson's Grill in the background. That's right. And sidewalks again on Donald That's the old Jitney. That, that was uh, run by Salter, and, and it cost you five cents to uh, go in the Jitney over to Allendale. To Allendale. That's I right. I heard a lot about the Jitney. It was, a, it was like a bus service from Derry to Allendale. Yes, and it ran um, from Allendale. There's Pierpont Morgan. He was a Molson salesman. There's Bill Lowe, who is, uh, his father had the furniture store first. There's the... Uh, entrance to the OPP office. The OPP office was up at the upper left-hand corner of the um, Ross block. You see, they didn't have much trouble parking back in those days. No. no. There's uh, somebody just slid on the ice. <laughs> this is winter again. That's right. Another scene. <laughs> 